Yeah, so my dad, um, the, well, it's an incredibly long story that I don't really have time to go into, but he had a lot of physiological and chemical imbalances and disorders and all of them atypical and nobody really had any idea what to do with them so we tried a million different things and in the end none of them really worked. Uh, he committed suicide in January of 2011. We got a phone call from him saying that he was leaving, uh, that he hoped that he would see us again, that he loved us and loved uh, his wife and loved his children. Um, but that he couldn't die at home with dignity um, and killed himself. Uh, he was missing for about three weeks uh, before the detectives or whoever is in charge of all of that stuff was able to identify him, but it happened the day that he called. And um, the last year and a half has been insane. It totally changed all of our lives. My mom and sister now live out in California where uh, all of my mom's family lives. I got married to my wife uh, a couple of months later, and um, it's just been, it's been a really crazy thing. Um, however, as far as uh, anyone else that is struggling with the idea of suicide, with thoughts of depression, I would just say, one, uh, you're not alone in it. Two, the goodness of God and the kindness of God and the love of God and the mercy of God aren't contingent upon your circumstance and He is good nonetheless and He loves you and Jesus is called a sympathetic suffering servant in the Bible. Um, and I think that the most encouraging thing to me uh, in the last couple of years, uh, man, Jesus has like made himself so much more valuable to me than he ever was before because he truly had, I mean, <laughs> in the midst of tragedy, you can either be like, well, screw you, God, you're obviously not real, or I believe you, and I'm going to believe that you're good regardless. And so I think it's just been a continual process of him showing me that he really is enough. And um, it's, it's awesome. And I think that one of the most encouraging things to me is that God does have a hand even in suffering. Like you look at the cross and Jesus said, not my will, but yours. Um, God like willed that for Jesus and it was the greatest injustice that's ever happened. Um, far beyond comparison to my dad's suicide, far beyond comparison to anything that could happen to any of us. It's the greatest shame, the greatest injustice that Christ had to go through. And yet God redeemed that, loved that, um, purpose that for the salvation of the world and there's like immense hope in that and I know that my dad's story has been very difficult for me. Um, I've hashed it out a million different times with a million different people um, but it has truly been a joy to be able to look back on that and say Jesus made himself more valuable to me here. Jesus cares about you in the midst of your suffering. I've been able to relate to people that I never would have been able to relate to had that not happened. And obviously I wish that it didn't happen. I'm not saying that that you know, justifies it. I think that what my dad did was sinful and I think that it was selfish. But it's not beyond the grace of God. My dad was a pastor, a missionary, a Christian. Uh, I got an email. For, I, I got all kinds of stuff from all kinds of people talking about how he was in hell and all kinds of things of that sort. And I would just say to anyone who has lost someone to suicide that loved Jesus, um, there are people all throughout the Bible that are heroes of the Bible that despaired of life. The blood of Christ covers sin. <laughs> There's nothing in the Bible about suicide being this ultimate sin that sends you directly to hell regardless of whether or not you've loved Christ for your whole life or not. Like, this world has fallen, it is sinful. And that happens, and that's not, it's not okay, but it's not beyond grace. So, I love my dad, and then I'll, we'll, we'll hang out again.